The Tamata Mushroom Company is New Zealand's second largest mushroom growing business. It began operating in the 1960s. The business specialises in white button and portobello mushrooms, producing over a thousand tonnes each year in total. Tomato mushroom started in 1967. It originated from two families, Phil Hawley and Stuart Speeden. They used to grow strawberries together and they decided they would go into the mushroom business. So from very humble beginnings, we now produce over 21 tonnes of mushrooms a week and we have a staff of over 100, up to 120, and we pick mushrooms 364 days of the year, every day except Christmas Day. Our main customers are a lot of local restaurants, Hawke's Bay Farmer's Market, the Grower's Market, and mainly all supermarkets around the North Island through foodstuffs. The business was sold in 2012 to Michael and Randy Whitaker and Chris and I, we are second generation. We were asked to stay on and we're thoroughly enjoying it. It's good to see a new owner, new direction, new blood, and Chris and I will stay on as long as we're needed. Michael's plans are to modernise the business, to expand the business, and I think he's quite into sustainability. We're changing, we have electric forklift and the pickup buggy that goes around picking up mushrooms in the sheds, that's an electric vehicle as well, and I think that's where the future of the business will go. We're the second largest mushroom farm in New Zealand, and there's only six commercial mushroom agaricus farms left. When we started, there was over 50, and I think there were six in Hawke's Bay, but because of Resource Management Act and expenses and encroachment from towns into the countryside, there's now only six left. Mushrooms only really have a shelf life of seven days. We used to export, but I don't think any farms are exporting now overseas. Most farms in Australia are at capacity where we used to export to, but no, I can't see any exporting in the future. We start off putting out approximately 100 bales, 350 kilo bales laid out. We put a watering arm over that and over four days we put 40 hours of watering. That just gets the water in to activate the straw. And then we lay it out in rows. We put chicken manure with gypsum mixed in. Chicken manure is for the protein and the gypsum is just to open up the compost. Over two weeks we put a compost turner through it. We bring it out and we mix it and we put it back into the bunkers. And then after two weeks we lay it out in a row and we turn it again and that stage we're always constantly checking for water and we then turn it and it goes into a pasteurisation tunnel. The pasteurisation is to really is to get rid of the bad pathogens and it also it converts the carbohydrates into protein and you need that and it gets rid of the ammonia as well so you have to get rid of the ammonia that's converted into protein as well. It's composting at up to 75, 80 degrees Celsius. And once it comes out, we keep adding more water. Then it goes into the pasteurization tunnel. It is 58 to 60 degrees. And that's a process taken over a week. We're actually evening out the compost to get the temperatures even. Basically, it's done in bulk. We just push cold air through and completely pasteurize it. It's a quite a sustainable, economical way of pasteurising. Once it's been in the pasteurisation tunnels, it's brought out with a loader, it's put along a conveyor belt, dropped through the roof, and it's put into the old traditional Douglas fir trays. The spawn is added into the trays, and we, they're weighed at about 90 kilos of compost, and then the trays are put into a spawn room, and they're in there for two weeks. And once the spawn hits the compost, it wants to colonise and so you get quite a heat surge. So we're continuously cooling it and putting a lot of high humidity in to control those temperatures. After the tray has been spawned, the casing is then added to it at about five centimetres. We need that on the top, so that goes through. The, you can see the white mycelium is growing through 
casing and that'll come through into the top here and that will need that to form and grow the mushrooms to pin into. After six to seven days, it'll be fully colonised right through to the top of the casing. We then open it up and we put fresh air in and the mushroom then thinks it's time to fruit. Ten days later, we'll pick our first crop of mushrooms. So we're picking around 21 tonnes a week and one of these trays here will pick probably around 20 to 22 kilos per tray. The reason we have them in the dark is because of the electricity bill. But if you have them outside, they actually brown with the sun. So the whiter the better, the supermarkets like them as white as possible for quality. Close to 60% of our production is the white mushroom and the other 40% is the portobello. So we have a good mix. The supermarkets with the white buttons, they like them closed. So they like the white and it's the quality. With the portobellos, they like them open and that's what the shop is like. And we do the vitamin D mushrooms. It's something that we're the original farm to actually do them. In the States, it's taking off. In Australia, it's, it's been very popular there. So Michael's brought it into New Zealand. And what happens is we have the, the pulsating ultraviolet, two or three seconds, and it gives enough micrograms to have three or four of these mushrooms is enough for a human consumption in one day. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.